I've been saying for a while now that I'm going to change the way that we do object collision into working with circles instead of boxes and the time's come for that finally. What I want to do first though is explain some of the logic behind it, some of the maths. We're going to be using a thing called Pythagoras theorem which if you've ever done high school maths you should have covered. You probably sat there thinking oh this is useless I'm never going to use this. Well the teacher can say I told you so and just go <laughs> at you because you do need it. It's important. Everything you learn at school is important in some way but specifically your maths. We're going to have a look at it and I've just set up a little file that has this code inside of it. It's saved in the same place as our game so that we can use our maths class. Most of the code is fairly straightforward except you won't have seen this line before. That's just a quick way of letting us drag an object. So if I run it, you can see that the yellow circle sticks to my mouse. And if I get too close to the blue circle, the yellow one goes transparent. Now at the moment these are using the standard hit test object to see if they're colliding, which means from the side and the top they seem to work pretty well. But if we come in from a corner, you can see that it goes transparent far too early. So that is that's saying they're touching when we can blatantly see that they're not. And that's the issue that this circular collision will get around. So we're going to replace this hit test object with a function of our own. I just want to explain it a little bit before we do it though. Basically, something we've already used, the distance between function in our maths class makes use of this Pythagoras theorem. It calculates distance between two objects by making a right angle triangle. So if I draw one out here, quickly make a right angle triangle and stick a few labels on it. So we're going to label the sides here. We've got A along the bottom, B there, or not, B, and finally we've got C. What Pythagoras theorem says is that the length of C squared is the combination of A squared and B squared. So the formula is actually A, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. I'll try and write it out, but I can't do the little two. So I might have to do A plus B space space equals C. And stick some twos in as well, higher up. Very technical demonstration here. I'm sure you can appreciate it. So we've got a squared plus b squared equals c squared. That's your formula if the two are positioned. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And what we've done in the maths class here, we've used the x and the y positions of our two objects to get the A and the B. So we can relabel these as X, Y and distance. And that's what our, our function has been doing. It's been generating this X and this Y based on some objects. So let's just move this and we'll pretend that this yellow circle is our ship and this blue circle is actually the ship's target destination because that's what we've been using this for. And to see if the ship had reached its target destination, our code makes this triangle. Now we can never see it. We did at one point show this line that we were meant to be following, but we never saw the X and the Y that we generated. And that's just because they're stored in variables inside the code. But we calculated the distance by fudging this X and Y. And we're going to do the same now to do our own collision detection between circles. I'm going to do that in the maths class that we've made, our reusable code maths class. I'm going to hop into it and I'm going to make a new function. Let's uh, have a function to check collision by using circles. What we're going to do is use a radius property on the two objects. So and I have to give them a radius. So it's probably best to use half of their width. So that's 90. The other one's 56. Nice round numbers, Anthony. So I'm just going to throw two properties into them. I'm going to say c1.radius equals what are they? That's 90 over 2, because the radius is half the width across. 
which is why I marked an R on each circle. C2 dot radius equals 56 over 2. And that's going to give each of these objects a radius property. We're going to code them into our ships and our bullets and our turret later on. So in the my maths, we'll make a public static function called hit test. It's going to take two objects, so I'm going to copy this. And it's going to return a boolean, either true or false if we're touching. And that's where we'll code it. Now just loading this file up again, you can see that a collision occurs when the combined radiuses, the combined radii of these two circles is greater than the distance between the two circles. Hopefully that makes sense. So half the width of this circle plus half the width of that circle added together are greater than the distance between the circles. And that's the logic we're going to use here. So we're going to put uh, Calculate the combined radii var combined radii equals o one dot radius plus o two dot radius, and that's our threshold to test against. So if the distance between these objects, hint hint, is greater than that, uh, is less than that, sorry, then we've got a collision. So if the combined radii is greater than the distance between the objects, we'll do the if. So if combined radius assists is greater than distance between O1, O2, reusing this function down here. So if that's true, then we have a collision. So we're going to return true. If not, we're going to return false. So at the end of the function, we just return false, because there's no way this can be reached if that has already been reached. Let's save that. We'll hop back to this and update our hit test now. So instead of having c1.hitTest object, we're going to have my maths dot hit test and we're going to pass the two objects in so we'll have c1 comma c2 and if we save that and test it I should be able to get up close touch and we finally go transparent that's because the combined radii is uh, greater than the distance I keep saying radii I don't even know if it's a word I'm going to look it up and then I'm going to come in from an angle you can see we can get a lot closer now we can get almost all the way and then we finally touch and you can see it goes transparent. So that's a much better way of testing two, circ two circular objects for collision. You can hover around it very close without actually going transparent. And that's what we're after in our game. So we've now got this ready-made function in our maths class that we can use inside our game. All we need to do is give our objects a radius. So we'll go to, let's start with the turret. I'm going to give the turret a radius. So I'll put public var radius type int. And we'll just set it at the moment to be 30. We should really set that in the constructor, but I'm in a bit of a rush now. I'm going to copy that. We go to the ship class. Let's give the ship a radius. So paste it in. But the ship's a lot smaller, so we'll give it a radius of 6. Save that class. I didn't save the turret, so I'll save that. And finally, the bullet class. Going to give that a radius, and let's say the bullet's quite small. We'll give it a radius of 3. Update the comment. Save the class. Should probably update the comment in the ship. Radius of 6. And now we need to update the level class to make use of that new function. And I just happen to be at the part in the code where we do the, the hit stuff for the ships. So I'm in the do ships function. And I'm at the point where we hit test the bullets against the ships. And I'm going to totally replace that line with 
my maths, which I don't think I've actually imported. My maths dot no I haven't. So let's import let's import the my maths class. Import reusable code dot my maths. So that's imported. Go back down to the do ships. So we're going to say if my maths dot hit test sh because that's the ship and then bullets b count for the bullet and that's all we need for that save that let's just check it so that's checking when ships are hit by bullets so let's just <laughs> let's run the right file for a start make sure we get no errors and that we can still actually kill the ships And that seems to be working. Now we can exaggerate it by putting the radius of a ship up. So if we said a, a ship has a radius of 60 instead, we can fire pretty much anywhere near that ship and it'll die, as long as we're within about 63 units of it. You can see that I'm nowhere near hitting that ship and it's still dying. And that's because we made a massive radius, a massive hitbox, so you've got to be careful with that. It's just put it back to what it was. Go back to the level and update this hit test as well. So when the ships are hitting the player, at the moment they're using square collision, which means the, the turret on the ship is affecting the size of the, the turret base, which isn't right. So we're getting hit before we should do really. I'm going to replace that with the my maths dot hit test. And in this case, we're using ship and the player. SH and the player. Save it and test it. We should see now that ships have to get right up to the base before they'll kill us. If I point the turret at the ship, you should notice that it flies. Oh, it doesn't. I've made the radius a bit too big, I think. Yeah, possibly. So the radius of my ships, or well, my turret, is possibly a bit big, so let's just knock that down a bit. 25, possibly. Try that. I did save everything, didn't I? Yeah. So when they get a bit closer, there you go. So they can actually go through the nose cone of the turret now, get closer to the body. Possibly still a bit too big, so I'd be tempted to drop it further. Could actually see what size our turret is by double clicking on it. See what size that circle is. I can go further in. I could actually double click on it, that would be a big help. Why is it free transforming? There we go. Oh, so it's actually 30 wide and 30 high, so the radius of that would actually be 15. And that should be accurate. You'll have to adjust yours if your turret was a different size. But now they should get right up to the body. Yeah, there you go. So they actually land on the outline of the turret instead of hitting the cannon. So that's fairly cool. And that's radial collision for you. Circular collision. Quite a bit to wrap your brain around in that, so I'd be tempted to watch this back, dig out some maths resources online because there is no way you're going to fully master that in 14 minutes. It's just um, not not feasible. That's why GCSE Maths is a two-year course and not a 13-minute online video. But it's something to think about, and in the next one, we'll progress the game a little bit before we come back to do some other maths. See you soon.